Hey there, welcome to Oh Happy Plants. Today we are going to troubleshoot common watering issues. You're going to learn how to diagnose these problems and adjust your care based on what your plant is telling you. Basically, I want you to avoid all of my past screw-ups, if at all possible. Most new plant parents have issues with these things and they don't know how to diagnose them and they end up killing a few plants and I really want you to skip that part. I have killed my fair share of plants and it's my mission to make sure that you don't repeat my mistakes. So let's get started. All right, so all of these photos show plants basically screaming their little heads off about poor watering technique. It's pretty sad, right? The great news is that all of these issues can be fixed. Different watering issues will show up in different ways, and the trick is to properly read your plant and interpret the signals it gives you so you can adjust your care. Now, over the past few years, I've been a member of a few amazing groups on Facebook for people to help others with houseplants. And these groups are filled with love and everybody has great intentions. And I love these folks. But I have noticed that literally every time someone posts about their plant having an undiagnosed issue, at least one person says they're overwatering their plant. And this is, this is one of those things that somebody does, like as a new plant parent, a person will overwater a plant, they'll learn that they shouldn't do that, and then they will assume that every single yellow leaf is overwatering after that. And so this is definitely a concern, but it's only one concern, and about half the time the issue in question is stemming from the opposite and the plant is underwatered. But people always just go straight to overwatering because they found that out first. It's the first big mistake they made, and so they assume that every mistake is that. And so it's really important to know a little more and ask a few more questions before we just jump on overwatering as the solution and assume somebody's drowning their plant. So let's dig a little deeper and find this out. So when you see crispy brown tips like this, you're looking at a plant that went dry for a little bit too long between waterings. Now, this plant will recover completely, so don't worry. The brown edge can also be trimmed away at an angle if it bothers you, and I do recommend that people trim these because otherwise you might not notice if the brown gets a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. Um, you might just think that it's the same brown edge, but if you trim it away, then you'll notice if it continues having that problem because you might still be underwatering just a little bit. So to adjust your watering, simply check the soil moisture level a couple days earlier next time. If you usually water every two weeks, check on it 10 days after watering. After this point, you'll either want to increase the amount of water you give or the frequency you water. So typically you'll see brown tips when seasons change, both when the days get longer in the spring or when the days are really hot in the summer. And you can also see these brown tips occur when you turn your heater on in autumn because all of a sudden your plant is using a little more water, especially if a heater is blowing on it. And so that's another thing to check on too. If you'd rather not increase your watering, just move the plant away from the heater so it doesn't get so much direct heat. Here are a few examples of underwatered plants yelling at their owners about it. Um, the Ficus lyrata on the right, also called a fiddle leaf fig, doesn't get the standard crispy tips when he's underwatered. Sometimes it's the tip of the leaf, sometimes it's the middle, sometimes it's the, the edge closest to the, to the stem of the plant. And so basically he just gets crispy little patches anywhere on the leaf, and that's how you can kind of tell that this guy is being underwatered. So I mentioned in several other videos that I think about the soil as a sort of water bottle for your plant. If you went on a hike with an 8 ounce water bottle, you wouldn't get as far as if you took a quart. Same with your plants. If you notice that a plant is going dry after just a few days, the pot is probably too small or the soil isn't holding enough water. And sometimes older soil is depleted of the organic matter in it, which is usually like peat moss and stuff like that. The organic matter is what holds on to the water so that it doesn't just run out the bottom. If you have really sandy soil or a whole lot of like big chunks of bark in the soil, that will make the water run straight out, so you'll, so you'll need to increase your watering frequency, or even sometimes leave a little bit of extra water in the saucer. When you have a plant that is getting a little bit too dry, often you'll notice dead leaves on the plant, and these are called fired leaves. Basically the plant is using the oldest leaves as a water bottle so the growth tip doesn't die off. This lace aloe grows from the center outwards, and so the lowest outermost leaves are the oldest. Many succulents have this same growth habit. Any rosette succulents, they grow like from the center point outwards. And if you've ever seen dry leaves at the base of your succul succulents, it means you're not watering enough. 
It's a little bit hard to tell in these images, but each of these leaves is the oldest on the plant. The Aurelia on the far left fires leaves closest to the main stalk. The money tree will fire a whole stem with the five leaflets that's toward the base of the trunk. And the pothos is getting crispy leaves nearest the soil. Now, plants do this because the growth tip is the most biologically useful, and that's for a few reasons. So first, older leaves are usually furthest from the sun, and so the newer leaves are going to have the best chance at reaching light to make food. In the case of vining plants, like the pothos, the growth tip is how this plant walks, basically. And so if this plant can't grow towards more soil, potentially finding a new water source, it might just die in place. So your plant is looking for a puddle. And, and that's the only way they can walk around, is by continuing to grow forward and root up. And so definitely get to know your plant's growth habit. The leaves furthest from the growth tip, which is where the new leaves come out, are the oldest. Most plants are going to fire leaves like this when they're too dry, so if you notice the old leaves getting yellow and then crispy, it means you're underwatering. Yellowing leaves can have several causes. First, you're, if you're looking at an even yellow that sometimes starts at the tip or stem and then gradually turns the whole leaf yellow, that is a watering issue, most likely. If you leave it on the plant, it will eventually either go mushy and rot off or it'll get crispy. Now, before you wait for either of those things, you can pull it off. It's easy to tell what's wrong. You just check the soil. You're probably either over or under watering, and a quick check of the soil will tell you which. If the soil moisture seems perfect and you can't figure out the yellowing, or if the yellowing is uneven on the leaf, check for bugs. We're going to go into depth on the various pests that are common in houseplants soon, so hang tight on that. Um, I am going to make a video per pest because it is really important to know quite a bit about the little buggies that you're dealing with because they are jerks and we want to know exactly how to get rid of them. But again, if the yellowing is like around the edges or more concentrated on the leaf veins or kind of like just kind of a general shade of yellow, but you can still see that the leaf is mostly green, that is often a sign of pests and not necessarily a watering issue. So hang tight. I'll get that video out as soon as I can. All right, here are some more yellow leaves. Here are a couple more. Um, the fiddle leaf fig on the left was underwatered. If I had left this leaf on, then the yellow would have continued to move and replace the green on this leaf, move up towards the base of the plant, and the end of it would have turned brown, and then the whole leaf would have gotten brown and crispy because it's trying to pull the water that's inside the leaf back into the main stem of the plant. So you'll notice that the yellowing is gradual, but it starts at the tip of the leaf. And so the middle picture, the pothos, is both wilted and yellowing, and another sign that this plant is firing this leaf and underwatered is that this is the closest to the base of the stem. So this one is actually on that stem is the closest to the soil, and so it's the oldest leaf. And so it's pulling, again, pulling the water from the leaf back into the plant to make sure that the growth tip doesn't die off. And on the right, this aglaonema was watered as usual, and then it was transported. And so usually the soil moisture wouldn't have been an issue, but because it was in a dark and cool environment, it wasn't using as much water as quickly. And so it told me all about it by throwing off a yellow leaf. And um, you can see on the stem, there are several green leaves that are down further, closest to the soil. And so this one is not firing a leaf. It's simply fussing at me. And that that is the reason once I figured out I had just brought this guy home and um, I watered him before transport, and he was in the dark for a little while, and he did not like that. All right, next we've got wilt. Now, this is the opposite end of the spectrum. Your plant needs more water. So wilt is basically caused by a slight collapse in plant cells. Take a minute and think about a bouncy house you might find at a kiddo's birthday party. When it's inflated, it's springy and upright, and it takes the shape it's supposed to, like a castle or a house or something. And when you let some of the air out, it gets saggy and kind of folds in on itself. And that's basically what happens when plants wilt. They use some of the water within the plant cells for biological processes, and without water to replace it from the roots, like if the soil is dry, the cells will actually collapse and sag in on themselves. And because the cell walls make up the structure of the plant, you're looking at a structural collapse from the inside out. 
So plants wilt in many different ways. This Hoya is exhibiting extreme wilt. It looks all wrinkly and it feels really soft to the touch. It almost feels rotten, but it's not. And if you ever have a plant like this, don't squeeze or bend the leaves because that'll actually bust the cell walls and cause permanent lasting damage. Um, normally this is a thick, really rigid leaf that you can't do that to. And so with this guy, I just left him alone and rewatered him, and that leaf actually recovered. It's really amazing how resilient these little guys are. Here are a couple more signs of wilt. The pothos on the left is a thinner, flexible leaf than the Hoyo we just saw, but it's wilted here, and so it's much softer and more flexible than usual, and it also goes a little bit dull when it's wilty. Now the limelight dracaena in the middle is showing a pretty typical form of wilt for the thinner leafed dracaenas. And you can tell because it has kind of this wavy like lasagna noodle sort of look along the edge of the leaf. You can see those wrinkles there. And that's a sign of wilt. And unfortunately, this doesn't get much better after you correct your watering. So while you might be doing things right, your Dracaena may continue to look like this until new leaves grow in. So just hang tight with that guy. That won't necessarily ever go away once those leaves are kind of wrinkled like that. Um, but just continue watering as usual and make sure that that doesn't get worse. Because if it get, gets worse, then it means you are still under watering. Okay, so the av avocado tree on the right you would normally see the leaves a little bit more perky. Um, it's a bit droopy right now, and the edges of the leaves have that same sort of a thing that the Dracaena shows. The edges are a little bit bendy and kind of like roughly almost along the edges, and that is a definite sign of wilt. And with the avocado, it kind of does go away after you water it. It's, it's a different type of plant, so it does different things. So with this guy, he will perk up a little once he's watered, and those little bends will go away, and he'll be totally happy. A lot of folks are going to give you the advice to wait until a plant wilts and then water it. I completely disagree with this practice. So some crazy plant person who is also a scientist got the idea to hook a plant up to electrodes that measure distress signals emitted both when bugs chomp on the leaves and when it goes through a drought. So these are the two main things that stress plants out are going to be some kind of pest attacking them and they'll actually figure out how to make some kind of pesticide like within the plant itself it will emit some kind of a pesticide that either makes them taste bad or maybe makes the bugs tummy, get a tummy ache or something. Um, but then also when they have a drought, they definitely freak out because if they don't have water, they can't survive. And aglaonemas will actually, if you let an aglaonema get really dry, they will put out a bunch of flowers all of a sudden. I think what they're trying to do, the only thing I can tell is that they're trying to throw seeds on the ground because they think they're dying, you know? And seeds can withstand a drought. They just sit there until it rains again. And so then that plant is not going to like completely die because it's passed its genetic material on. So anyway, back to this crazy scientist. They have electrodes on a plant. They're measuring what signals are emitted, and they find out that plants literally scream when they wilt. They scream. And so it's a really good idea to let the soil go towards the drier end to kill off bacteria and fungi in the soil, because that can cause root rot. But if you let a plant go all the way dry and totally wilt, it's screaming. All right, next we've got spots on leaves. Um, these are caused by a few different pathogens. This photo shows Fusarium leaf spot on a Janet Craig Dracaena, and Fusarium is a fungus that crops up when the soil isn't allowed to dry between watering. And I haven't done enough research on this little jerk yet, but it's my understanding that it lives within a plant tissue, and so you can't actually get rid of it. And mitigation really helps because it will crop up more if the environment in the soil is kept consistently moist. Like if you never ever let it dry out, then it's going to give that um, fungus more space to breed and replicate and it'll cause more problems like this. And so if you let the plant get just dry before rewetting the soil, that's probably a good idea if you're seeing anything like this. 
Here are a couple more examples, two dracaenas and an aglaonema. All three are issues to do with a plant that has had too much soil moisture for too long. And we're not talking about, like when you see stuff like this, it's not because you overwatered it once and then corrected the issue. This is long-term overwatering. Like this is like three months and the soil never went dry once. And I'm not talking about dry to the point of wilting. I'm just talking about dry to the point of killing off those pathogens within the soil. So either way, this is no fun for your plant. This is why you need to watch out for overwatering. Sometimes these pathogens are eating the plant tissue. Sometimes they're releasing compounds that break down the tissue and kill it. And so you definitely just want to watch out for overwatering on a regular basis or just not allowing the, the soil to dry in between watering with these guys. Okay, so here's a quick warning. Sometimes plants come in with viruses and other pathogens that are spread through the whole plant and you can't actually get rid of them. They're systemic within the plant. Like if we have a virus like chicken pox, it actually embeds itself in our cells and then we never get rid of it. It's always present. And so this leaf is an aglaonema and it had a virus and plants can get viruses too. So this eventually killed the entire plant. There was not any way that I could correct it. At first I thought it was a watering issues issue, and so I did everything I could with the watering, you know, like drying them out, making them a little bit wetter, all of this. And then finally I looked at the back of the leaf and I saw this kind of rotten looking stuff, and I was like, oh, that's something different. And so I looked it up and I found out that this is a virus, and um, it's definitely something that's really hard to combat, if not impossible. And Sansevierias can actually get another type of um, infection. It's called anthracnose, and it's actually a fungal infection, and it causes large rotten spots on the leaves. Often what will happen is, like, um, we'll get big shipments of Sansevierias in, and they will, maybe a week or two weeks later, just be, like, rotting and falling over. Like, the big, thick leaves just having giant rotten spots that cause them to collapse. And they come in, and they look beautiful. And then it just takes about two weeks, and all of a sudden they're just dying. And so if you ever get a Sansevieria and that happens, it's not your fault. It came in with that problem. And I think what's going on is that they're treated with um, some kind of like fun fungicide or something like that at the grower. And then as soon as you get the plant, the fungicide was not actually taking care of the issue. It was just keeping it at bay. And so then you bring it home and the whole plant dies because you're not treating it anymore. And so it's a shame, but it's definitely something to look out for. And don't feel bad if you purchase a plant like that and then it just suddenly dies. It's not your fault. Um, so these sorts of issues can be really hard or impossible to treat. So be really careful if you see any spots like these or like the ones I described on the Sansevieria. Wash your hands and your tools before pruning or even touching a healthy plant because you do not want to spread this. Okay, warning number two, water your damn succulents. <laughs> this is a topic near and dear to my, my heart. Um, the underwatered succulent is a big problem. Lots of people think that succulents don't drink much, and sometimes this is true, but mostly it's not. It really depends on the type of succulent and its native habitat, and there's an easy way to tell if you're underwatering. Is your succulent firing leaves? This Hoya on the far left is, and the ZZ plant on the right too. And the snake plant is wilty. See the curving, rippling, dried out leaf edge? That's wilt. And snake plants were recently reclassified as dracaenas, so they actually show a similar pattern as far as their wilt. Snakes and zizis also show wilt by getting little wrinkles that are actually like little grooves in the base of the leaf stalk. That's a sign that they are trying to conserve water and also the cell walls are collapsing. That's just kind of how they show it. Just a little note, snake plants are actually from the tropics. We're talking rainforest, and ZZs are from East African forests, where they get a reasonable amount of water, and they do have a drought, which is why they have that lumpy potato-looking root thing. And so they can withstand a drought, but that doesn't mean they thrive. Typically, these guys, when they go through a drought, they will kill off their leaves, so they're just a root underground. And... I don't know about you, but I don't want that to happen to the ZZ I have in my house right now. I could give it a drought because it mimics natural conditions and that's what it's used to. Or I could have a thriving ZZ plant year-round. Which would you rather have?
I am definitely on the side of watering the ZZ plant. So that's just a little a little rant, I guess, about underwatered succulents. I see fired leaves on succulents all the time. I see wilted succulents all the time. And it's just a huge misconception about these guys. Definitely pay attention to your succulents. Listen to what they're telling you and water them how much they want. All right, let's go ahead and recap. So if a plant has crispy tips, you probably need to up the watering. If it has yellow leaves, check the soil moisture and adjust if necessary. If you're confounded or the yellowing is very slow and not evenly spread over the leaf, look for pests. And again, we're going to have plenty of videos coming out about pests soon. If you have a wilted plant, check your watering schedule. You might be watering too infrequently or not giving enough water at a time when you do. And also remember to water your succulents if they're firing leaves or if they're wilted. Thanks again for checking out Oh Happy Plants. And to our members, you're fabulous. You allow us to plant a tree for each of you every single month you're a member. Together, we are going to reforest the world. I'm so excited. I hope you are too. Happy planting.